Hi, everybody. My name is Rafa Lombardino, and this is Translation Confessional. Client better have my money. In episode two, all the way back in January, gosh, it feels like a lifetime ago, I talked about the California Assembly Bill number no. five, known as AB5, and how it has hurt translators and interpreters, among many other independent contractors, since it was implemented on January 1st, 2020. If you are unfamiliar with what AB5 is all about, please go back and listen to episode two and look through the resources I've left in the episode description. I have very few clients who are based in California. One of them didn't even bat an eye at our collaboration since AB5 went into effect because they have been working with my company, Word Awareness, for quite some time now and understood that ours is a business-to-business relationship. So the new law did not apply to what we have going on. Another client just asked me to fill out a form to confirm that ours is a small corporation registered in California so that they had a clear record and could continue to work with us as a service provider. Well, then there was this one client, though, who insisted on making things more difficult than they should be. There's always that one client, isn't there? The story I'm about to tell you is so out of this world, I I hope I do it justice, and you can understand the level of confusion the client has put me through. Okay. First of all, I must say that I don't work with them on a regular basis. They must not have a strong demand for Portuguese-related translations. So this was the first time they reached out to me in a couple of years. The project manager shared the project details. I worked on this very small project, and the respective invoice was sent out. Nice and easy. Then the time came when the invoice was due. A few days after payment should have been received, Our accounting system sent out an automatic payment reminder. I followed up on it to make sure everything was okay and the payment was on its way. The answer I got was that the payment had already been made. I asked them whether they had sent a check by mail or initiated a direct deposit so I could let our accounting know. Then they told me they had made payment through a third-party service and the money was ready for me to withdraw it to our bank account. I wish you could see the look on my face right now as I try to remember the absurd timeline of events. Wait a second, a a third-party service? You mean PayPal? I asked them. No, they did not mean PayPal. I pressed further and found out it was a service I had never signed up for and that the client had automatically created an account in my company's name when they decided unilaterally to pay that service instead of paying our company directly. I took a deep breath and I told them they would have to cancel that transfer and send us the money directly. The accounts payable person I had been in contact with escalated the issue and put me in contact with the CEO directly, since she, the CEO, had made the executive decision to use this third-party service whenever they worked with a vendor in California. Before we continue, I wanted to tell you a bit about OnlyOffice. It's a very strong candidate to replace Microsoft Office in your daily work routine. And it's 100% compatible with all Office formats. DocX from Word, Excel as X from Excel, PPTX from PowerPoint, you get it. All the file formats we usually work with as translators. Only Office is pretty affordable though, and you can purchase a few licenses together so everyone at home or at work can use it. The best thing is you can use it on a Windows or Mac computer or like me, on Linux. In other words, you can use Only Office no matter what kind of computer you have. You can use it in the cloud too, So basically, you can translate and edit documents and collaborate with other translators online, all while keeping your information safe and in the same file format you need. If you'd like to give OnlyOffice a try, go to this webpage, bit.ly slash tc-oo. It's easy to remember, 
TC is for Translation Confessional, and OO is for Only Office. Once again, the webpage is bit.ly slash tc dash oo. Hope you like it. The messages I exchanged with the CEO made me feel like I was the one being difficult. I asked her why her company had made the decision to use a payment method that my company doesn't work with. They said that because of AB5, they can make payment to translators and interpreters directly since they're based in California and that's what the law says. I tried to argue and explain to them that things were not quite like that. There was so much back and forth for a few days that I felt like I was losing my mind. I provided a lot of paperwork, including a W-9 form that the Internal Revenue Services, the IRS, makes available here in the United States for tax purposes. The name of this form is Request for Taxpayer Identification Number and Certification. And it's basically what I send to my U.S. clients to provide information and word awareness. That is, the company name, address, contact details, and something called Employer Identification Number or EIN, which is the tax ID U.S. companies use when filing their taxes. I thought that would be enough to clear up any doubts that they were dealing with a California corporation and that I'm not an independent contractor working under my own social security number. It was to no avail. I kept pushing, though, because I'm persistent as hell, and people better know I'm a stickler for rules. To paraphrase Rihanna, client better have my money. With all that back and forth, I not only send them a W-9, but I also send them information on AB5, including all those links I had shared as part of our January episode. And geez, I, I even sent her the link to the episode itself to see if she would listen to it and get educated on the subject. I explained to the best of my abilities that I am an employee of Word Awareness. The company pays my salary. There is nothing in AB5 that could indicate that the client's company would be held liable under the law and owe me employee benefits and wages for taking advantage of me as an independent contractor. All I would get from her was, just log into your account with the third-party service and withdraw your money. I had no intention of doing that because I didn't want to even contemplate the fact that this third-party service would keep a chunk of the invoiced amount just because this nightmarish client decided to send them the money they owed me for the service I had provided them. Do you want to know what was the only thing that got through to them? There were actually three strategies that came into play here. First, I reminded them that we had worked together in the past, and I sent copies of the three invoices Word Awareness had issued to their company in the previous years. All of them had been paid just fine, our information was already in their system, and they were just being difficult and completely misinformed now just because they didn't care to educate themselves on what the actual AB5 mass is all about. Then, the second tactic I used was saying that I would have to get our lawyer involved. We work with a local attorney whenever there's something we need legal advice on, and he was actually the one who helped us incorporate our business when our activities started to grow exponentially over a decade ago. I was getting ready to shoot him an email and ask him to please get on the phone with that clueless client. That would have been a total waste of his time and knowledge. Something ridiculously silly, but I was willing to pay for this unexpected and totally avoidable expense just to have him be the voice of authority and reason and make the client listen. Finally, I had to resort to a veil threat, and this is what I told the client. Do you understand that sending the money to a third-party company, nonetheless one headquartered in Eastern Europe, could be seen by Californian authorities as money laundering? After all, they hired a California company to provide translation services to them, also a California company. But then the money somehow had to be rerouted through Eastern Europe to make its way to the service provider? The IRS will think that there's something fishy going on, I told her. 
and your company may end up being audited because of that. I finally threw the last punch. Well, I must tell you, I'm very professional and things go very smoothly 95% of the time over here. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been working as a translator for the past 23 years. Our company would definitely not have survived this long, being founded back in 2004 and then incorporated in 2009, if I didn't follow the rules and play by the book. However, when clients act completely mindlessly like that, something's got to give. That strategy seems to have worked, and soon payment was received by direct deposit to our business account. I would like to say that we all lived happily ever after, but as I'm recording this episode right now, I can feel all that outrage surfacing back again. And the worst part of it all is that I wasted all that time with all the back and forth for days trying to educate the client just because of a very tiny project that was worth only $150 which would have easily been eaten up had I got a poor lawyer involved. Send me an email at rlombardino at wordawareness.com or leave a voice message on my anchor page. If I get enough feedback and voice messages, I can go back to the subject and post a special podcast episode with everyone's opinion on this very same theme. By the way, My anchor page is anchor.fm slash translation dash confessional. I look forward to hearing from you. Stay tuned for weekly episodes and subscribe to Translation Confessional through your favorite podcast app.